Sean, you were in the panel today. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about that discussion, what themes are coming out of that, and uh, what message you want to leave for uh, the workers uh, from this conference. Sure. It was interesting to kind of hear other communities that have the same challenges and also how a lot of us have found, found the same tactics to keep quality control up, to give upward mobility towards our crowds so that our, our best uh, creative workers um, are, um, are able to kind of more for their careers and get more opportunity and more creative opportunity. Um, so it was a really fantastic discussion. It's always great to learn about other people fighting your fight. I know, and I'm hearing from a lot of CEOs that, that the answers are, are, are many. Some is some of it is platform. Mm -hmm. Some of it is intricacies in the platform and sort of soft skills to measure and, and get the. Uh, the workers to feel like they're part of a, a working community mm -hmm. and that they're not in an office. Um, do you have any thoughts on what that would be, especially in the creative um, world? Our tactic, you know, we offer opportunities for illustrators around the world to create the art and merchandise for rock stars and other pop culture brands. Right. And so, you know, first and foremost, just that's a door that's not open to most people, you exactly. know, outside of New York and LA. So that that's a, a, a pretty amazing kind of starting place for us. Um, and now it's about, you know, not just a winner takes all platform, but making sure that dozens of people, hundreds of people, thousands of people are actually collecting royalties in real time as their designs are selling all around the world, again, for these big pop culture brands. Um, recognition is a huge part of it. We Rewarding folks is a huge part of it, um, and, and, and I, you know, it, we're all software based, so there's always systems that um, can make it better. And uh, I, I think where we are as a company, we're focused. Uh, we are really focused on our efficiencies behind the scenes, exactly. and we're really focused right now on the much more on the experience that our consumers are having, that our that our community interacts with day in day out. So you mentioned some pretty big names. And I'm curious, as probably everyone else is, how do you build your pipeline? How do you connect with those people? Are they reaching out to you because it's such a great concept and obviously crowdsourcing is excellent, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the creativity space. It, it, it brings a lot of the virtual thought and originality. How are you building that pipeline and what does a repeat client look like? So for us, we have a, uh, a huge head start. I own another company um, that I've owned for 10 years that empowers independent uh, musicians um, who own their own labels like Ani DeFranco or Jack Johnson. We even uh, worked with Justin Timberlake for a while on, on, on creating um, a team and, and executing the strategy and marketing um, so they can compete. We also do that um, with the largest festivals in the country. And we're really involved. So there's a huge credibility factor there. Um, we're not the guys who started with kind of the top-down major label focus. Mm -hmm. um, all of our artists have careers that have kind of really scratched up from the, 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 the very bottom, and they've built their way up hand-in-hand -hand with our team. Um, so I, you know, I have another 12 years' experience before, before even starting this other company, which is called Music Allies. So when we approached this concept, it was first and foremost, wow, there's, there's this huge void of creative opportunity for illustrators. Um, but then we were marketing, and so the, the platform that the sell through, if you want to know how we have this, this thing is reputation first. Um, the, the second is we go to the entertainment companies and we can show immense value in terms of how hundred designs turn into hundreds of thousands of impressions, almost like that. So the idea of these, these pieces of art going social, um, which happens almost instantaneously, instantly in, in, that, um, in that kind of platform, um, creates tons of value. So it's marketing, one, and then two, it's marketing pays for itself because they'll actually get a huge return on their investment on, on the, the sale of merchandise. So it sounds like you completely circumvented having to compete with some of the larger agencies in many ways, or is that still something that you have to do in terms of maybe larger projects or, or can long continuing business or anything? Well, the, the, the music space yeah. is, is our starting point and, yeah. and where we're going is much more in sports, film, TV. Um, music will always kind of be a big part of our DNA um, and you know, we, we love it. Um, but uh, I don't know if it's circumventing agencies. I think what's happening now is um, there almost seems to be an infinite volume that we can do. You know, for instance, I just did a week of meetings in Nashville. And it's, you know, I could fill up our site for an entire year just based on national projects. Wow. Um, so, you know, we, we've 
barely touched the surface. We've just doubled down, um, just the, the folks who were kind of, you know, shaking those hands and talking to people. Almost all of our meetings where they used to be kind of the, you know, kind of the lower part of the, the every, you know, whether management company or record label are kind of now very top down. Everybody sees it so we can kind of, you know, increase our flow exponentially with one meeting as opposed to kind of scrapping together each little project. Um, so that's what about challenges in the business? Obviously in design, you know, copyright is an issue and, and making sure that you're getting true original work. How have you guys handled that? Man, you just get a kick-ass community who, <laughs> who just ain't, ain't going to take shit from anybody else in the community. And, and we ride them out of town with Western style, you know. So, um, you know, we're really, really bold about that. And uh, we have some partners in the stock image space that work with us. Um, you know, we bring in really incredibly quality designers. We also bring in young designers. So um, when we bring in young designers, you know, the truth is they're, they're probably not going to win the contest. Sometimes they do, which is awesome. They may end up getting uh, merchandise royalties, but probably not. And so we work with art schools to send tutorials to them. We, you know, we, we try to educate them. We educate them on um, uh, 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 um, the, you know, using stock image. We have a no photo policy right now on the site. Um, so that takes a, a huge part. It's a very illustrator heavy um, and that, that's what we're shooting for I is that. yeah yeah a lot, a lot of beautiful art, art yeah. original art um, and we think through the stock licensing that our all our artists are going to end up you know seeing royalties even if they're you know they're you know one one design of out of 400 and it, it doesn't get merchandised I and mean, those designs are really really good um, so we um, we have a no tolerance um, for uh, copyright control and uh, if we miss it someone in our crowd gets it <laughs> um, so, but you know, we, the, we we go through a whole process before we ever uh, merchandise or reward anybody. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it because I, that's one objection that I think that uh, some people have to crowdsourcing is always if you do something anonymous, you want all the quality, and then you know you look at a site like yours and how beautiful everything is and so much original artwork. And mm -hmm. realize why you know, you know crowdsourcing will probably expand. Years more I think it's huge, and I don't think it's the answer for everything. I mean, a lot yeah. of our business is morphing into direct to these designers as well, um, and I hear that from every single company here that you know once you source a talent, it's it's a starting point. And so, um, you know, my focus is building more recognition, um, more. Um, uh, ways to achieve things on the lower end in terms of talent, right? Because they, they 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 can be just as good as those those folks who are who are just creating the most fabulous artwork, and then upward mobility for the folks at the top end. You know that they can get more opportunities. They can get guarantees that their stuff's going to you know become merchandise. Yeah. Um, we have a really unique platform. We um, not only can you become merchandise if you hit to a certain level, you get a invite. It's not an open invite, and we guarantee that you your submissions become merchandise. And so for our very best illustrators, we take all the, you know, if you want to go, you know, this this word that comes is talked about around here too much and with, with fair spec, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it specs a part of it, but, you know, I, I do believe that people who are who are that good, we can convince every one of our clients that, that hey, you want this person's art becoming merchandise. Um, and that's a, that's a level to get to. Upward mobility is huge for us. Well, you know, I can't even draw a stick figure, but I feel like I would want to be one of your workers, so that's a great. <laughs> I want to wrap up. I just, you, you talked a little bit about the contest model, and that you know, obviously has been primarily how a lot of uh, creative uh, labs have been working in the crowdsourcing space. Do you see evolving? I know that curated content has now been a part of things. What else do you see evolving as far as like, just get, gathering workers and getting the best work? Um, it certainly sounds like you guys have done some real modifications through that. Yeah, I, I think we're we're just starting down this this road of, of the merchandising, the stock imaging. Um, so we think we have a, we, we we got a long way to go on, on executing and doing that right. And I'm sure it'll adapt. I'm sure it'll morph. Um, we think you know I, I, my dream is that you know you walk in Urban Outfitters and you're seeing our designs that you're you know you're seeing folks from all over the world and all over this country. Um, we want to introduce more people on a personal basis to their next job. Um, you know it, it's okay if they leave our system. You know we we, we you know. It, you know, our, our design, our business designs are not necessarily to, um, to, to to be a massive departure from going to a nine to five job. It's great if you can do that. 
we already have designers who are you know earning thousands of dollars they're getting to go backstage and meet their heroes they're getting to go to private events and you know we, we obviously have a lot of cachet of what we can offer people beyond um, but we have folks who we've introduced them to their next job and they're really grateful um, my favorite story is the guy who won the Jack Johnson contest is uh, uh, works in clothing retail out of Boulder Colorado raising three girls um, not you know your graphic designer he just did illustration on the side he loves Jack Johnson and uh, he won that contest um, he got so much fanfare and recognition locally he's now a full-time designer he's you know which is hard to change careers when you're ra raising three girls you know and he got to you know take his girls and meet Jack and you know like that's all of it's huge I mean you know he made some money he got that recognition we changed his life and that's that's I mean, huge. it's unprecedented access for a fan. You're, you're yeah. giving access that, you know, it's almost it almost is a backstage pass. Well, you know, he, <laughs> and he, he's an he's an anomaly. Um, not too many people are aware that um, less than forty percent of our designs, on average. Um, come from fans of the band. So a big part of our thing is that crowdsourcing to just the fan base only goes so far. Yeah, of course. And so, I live a tunnel vision there. Yeah, well, that, it, 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 it's tunnel vision and it's, it's different perspectives, but you know, we, we also get these letters like, you know what, I didn't win that contest, but I found my new favorite band. I mean, those are huge. And again, we have a different world. They're all now ambassadors. So that one person has 500 Facebook friends and they have a new favorite band. And you know, there's huge effects even beyond just the workforce. So, no, of course, yeah. of course, ripple effects. Yeah, absolutely. And the whole industry is providing that, I think. So lastly, you, you, good segue, you brought up favorite brand, band, and I know you have music allies. So tell me who you're liking right now. Personally, I'm having like a foster to people moment. I love so from foster. LA. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's kind of a six-year-old and eight-year-old, and what's so funny is that uh, that's the first song that my, my kids like really embrace in pop culture. Yeah. And uh, my uh, eight-year-old in second grade, so of course he's reading, and he's like, well, let's look up the lyrics, Dad. And, uh, and I didn't really pay attention. I was horrified. You know? I was gonna yeah. Say, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll be. Honest, I have too many favorite bands. I won't point them out. But the, what? What else? Genre. <laughs> no, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll answer really differently. I, I, I'm so inspired. By what's happening? I, you know, I, in music, music landscape. There's a great article in All Things D uh, this week about how musicians are monetizing. It's not about the recorded music business um, at all. You know, more people listen to music. There was a study that came out this week that five of the top ten Facebook, uh, or sorry, Twitter lists are musicians, and 40 out of top 100, or whatever those numbers were, they're significant. So these musicians have a huge voice. Obviously, we're taking advantage of that at, at, at Creative Allies. It drives a, a lot of demand for, for our services. Um, but one of the things that's happening in music that doesn't really get a lot of publicity is I'm not a genre person. I love metal, I love bluegrass, I love soul, you know, and. Me too. <laughs> and but 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 traditional music. media just cages us in for so long. Like you know, we probably grew up in the same era, and so we had our Rolling Stones and our Spins, and you know we had our yeah, our you know three TV stations and, and a few radio stations. Music, we won't name names. Yeah, <laughs> and, and so now. Um, I've been really involved in bringing the, um, uh, the European festival model to the United States and um, we sell um, you know just uh, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in tickets to these experiential uh, uh, festivals that bring 10 to 100,000 people in one place who are sharing music that doesn't necessarily have any genre tie and it's fabulous. Oh, yeah. So I think right now in the time of like music discovery and, and loving bands, it's never been a better time for the for the consumer and then this experience of kind of sharing that with people um, in, a, in a very one-on-one -on -one fashion, um, you know, in the middle of a field or in the middle of a city or wherever that is, is, is well, I already great. have my tickets to Coachella, you're preaching to the choir. Right on. <laughs> I don't even so. know who's playing, I just bought them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm copping on the, the, on the uh, naming a favorite band is like, you know, picking one of my kids is my favorites, I'm not doing it. I so. figured I'd get you talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome.